Welcome to Family Faith Formation right here at Holy Family. We're glad you're here. Well, hello. How are things going? Here we are starting November. Man, it's almost Advent. Then you know what holiday is next. Yep, Jesus' birthday. Do you get excited when it's someone else's birthday? I sure hope so. I hope you share in their joy and celebration. Birthdays are wonderful, no matter how old you are. But we have November and December to get through before we think about Jesus' birthday. Let's begin with a prayer for our families and for the month of November. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, please bless our families with your love and protect us from harm. Give us grace to forgive, strength to overcome the difficulties we face, and keep us together when the world tries to pull us apart. We welcome November, this new month, new chapter, new page, and new wishes. May the month give us courage, strength, confidence, patience, self-love, and inner peace. May every day in November fill us with hope, love, sunshine, and renewed energy. Let there be joy, fun, and laughter in every day, in each and every home. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I pray that you are getting the hang of our F3 program. It has taken some doing, but I feel like we are making moves in the right direction. I enjoy this new program. I know it's not ideal for all families right now. You're having to be the parent, a spouse, and a teacher all day, every day. Please continue to try to make F3 worksheets and family time fun. Work together to look things up and continue to do your best. Let's take a quick review of the last two months. You can always go back and watch the bonus features. They're in, uh, watch the videos in the bonus features. And I think we're gonna keep them up for the whole school year. For our kickoff, we discussed how we prepare for mass, getting yourselves in the right frame of mind to go and listen to the priest. Then we learned about the introductory rites. Can you remember anything about those rites? How about the antiphon? The words read if we don't sing an opening song. They are some of the most beautiful words. Sometimes when I hear the antiphon, I say to myself, keep that message in your heart all day today. Here is an antiphon that I really enjoy. See if you like it too. It comes from Psalm 17, verses 6 and 8. To you I call, for you will surely heed me. O oh God, turn your ear to me, hear my words. Guard me as the apple of your eye, in the shadow of your wings protect me. Aren't those beautiful words? I know someone else who thinks you are the apple of their eye, your parents. Their love for you has no measure just like the love from our Lord Jesus. Powerful words, right? Then at the ending, it, where it says, the shadow, protect me in the shadow of your wings. Imagine a mother hen taking her little chicks and huddling them together under her wings to protect them from danger. How warm, how comforting, how protected those little chicks must feel. That's just what Christ will do for those who love him. Isn't it comforting to know that? Who loves Jesus? For November, we have a special guest offering a special prayer for us. I'll call on him later. But for now, we want to look at the next part of the Mass. Did you ever look at Mass in different parts, just thinking how long, or did you just think of how long and drawn out it was? 
just like in life, if something's big or long, like a project to accomplish, you need to break it down. Small chunks are much more manageable. When my husband and I travel, we always say we're eating a whale. Little by little, we bite off another part, another chunk of highway. Okay, you know we really don't eat the whale, but traveling is sometimes long and many highways. They're involved, but we get through it little by little, breaking it down. That's what Father Blood is doing for us when he explains the different parts of the Mass. This month's section is titled The Liturgy of the Word. Huh? What liturgy? What's liturgy? What word? Man, we better pay attention. Sounds like a lot to learn here. Hi, Father Blood. Thanks for being here to teach us about the Mass. What up? Oh, <laughs> it's that time already? I was just working on my homily for this weekend, which is pretty apropos, considering I think we're talking about the Liturgy of the Word. Now, the Liturgy of the Word is a Greek composite word, and I know all of this right out of my brain. It's a Greek composite word, meaning originally a public duty, a service to the state, undertaken by a citizen. So, what does that mean? It means that we have something to offer God in a, not a rigid way, but in a, an intentional and direct sort of way. These are the things that we offer to God, and maybe it's easier to see with the second half of Mass, but today we're going to talk about the first half of the Mass, the Liturgy of the Word. So, let's get to it. I'm gonna check out my handy dandy catechism. It says that the liturgy is an action taking place by the whole Christ, right? We all act, right? The priest and the person of Christ the head and the people of God are a part of this action too. So, first things first, we gotta remember we're a team. But if we're gonna do this, you know where we gotta go. To the church. We're on our way. This is probably the last time you're going to see the gym church in one of these videos. Because we're pretty, pretty ready to get over there. But for now, we're back to the gym. There's people in there. So we're going to, we're going to, so, uh, you know, we're going to make our way to the gym eventually. But maybe we can start in the office. There's like stuff going on over here too, man. This is a bumping place. Where on the street is, the church is empty. Let's go. Don't you just love fall? Man, God's too good to us. I'm a rebel. A liturgy is sort of this event of intentional pieces we put together for an intended outcome. So we do certain things in a certain way so that we can do what? Give glory and honor to God. So today we're talking about the liturgy of the word. It's kind of the first half of the mass before we did the introductory rites. And now we're going to talk a little about scripture. We're going to talk a little about what is inside of this liturgy of the word. So i got to show you. The Ambo. So there it is in all its glory. So it, it's kind of just like a podium, but we call it an Ambo. But what happens here? This big book we call a lectionary. This is the one for weekdays, but we have a big one for Sundays too. And the lectionary is an awesome collection of books that we read from each and every day at Mass. And you think of what we might read from it? There's actually a couple very important pieces. First, we have a reading from the Old Testament. Now. Who do we know from the Old Moses Testament? Moses and Abraham and David. Awesome stories. David and Goliath and the Israelites walking out of the desert. All these different awesome stories in the Old Testament. And yet, that's not where it ends. Right? That's where it begins. So we start with the Old Testament because that's what really sets the stage of who we are and who God is. He's the creator. He made everything. That's a great place for us to start. God made us out of love. And then what happened? We sinned. We fell. So when Adam and Eve fell, it kind of made it so all of us needed a savior to come to save us, right? To make up for our mistakes, to make up for uh, the things that we do wrong. And we're going to get to that very important person soon, but you might notice we don't jump right from the Old Testament to what we call, spoiler alert, the New Testament. 
So we've got our Old Testament reading, and then we have the responsorial psalm. Maybe you heard it sung. Sometimes on the weekends, we have an awesome musician who will lead us and sing the responsorial psalm. But who wrote those, and why do they matter? Well, a guy named King David wrote most of them. Now, David had a pretty intense life. He went through a lot, but he decided instead of just keeping it all buried, he'd play music, and he'd sing, and he would tell poems, and he would share his own story and his own experiences, and and that's where we get the responsorial psalm as a way to kind of talk out our emotions, the things we're feeling and experiencing. So we've got the story of our people in the Old Testament and these beautiful songs. Before we get to the gospel, we might have a second reading. And that second reading is usually from St. Paul. Now, St. Paul was an awesome, awesome, awesome apostle to Jesus. Not one of the 12, but called right afterward. And he knew Jesus in a deep way, and he shared the message through letters, right? We call them epistles, the epistles of St. Paul, when he wrote letters to different communities to teach them about Jesus, the second coming. And that's the somebody we've been waiting for. So it might seem kind of odd because it's out of order. We've got our Old Testament. We've got these epistles, these important letters. And then the gospel, the coming of Jesus, why is that last? Wouldn't it make sense for Paul to come last since those were written last? Before the gospel, we'll hear somebody either sing or say the word, Alleluia, and we'll either repeat it back or sing it back. And it's kind of this sort of word that means glory to God because we want to praise him for the fact that he gave himself to us. So after the Alleluia, you'll hear father or a deacon read the gospel. That's the story of Jesus. Maybe it's a healing. Maybe it's a moment where he was teaching. Maybe it was just a moment of prayer, but we get to enter into the life of Jesus. And to see the life of Jesus is to remind us that we're not still lost in the desert. We're not still just these broken people from the Old Testament. Even way back when, when the Old Testament was written, they kind of knew in their hearts that they were waiting for the Messiah. They were waiting for the Savior. And now we have him in the gospel. So we have the story of our people in the Old Testament. We have the epistle of Paul normally that explains the different ways by which we can live a life of faith. And then we have the heavy hitter, the gospel. Jesus is here. Now, even way back when, the Jews used to read from the Psalms just like we do at Mass. This isn't something new. This is something we've been doing for a long time. We can even look to the early church, like the year 100 and 200, and the mass that they were experiencing, it looks a lot like ours. Justin Martyr talked about this very thing, us gathering together to listen to the word of God. It can be easy from our place in the pew, though, to get distracted and miss what's really going on. Sometimes they use really big words or old words or names we don't know and we can get confused. But if we listen really close, Jesus wants to speak to each of us. What does he have to say to you during the Mass? So, we've got our Old Testament, we've got our New Testament, we've got our Gospel, but that's not everything. We also get the homily. The homily is the part where me or one of the other priests tries to explain and share a little bit about what we just heard, making connections to see how the Old Testament prefigures the new, right? When we read the Old Testament, we can see Jesus, even if they don't name him. But also in the New Testament, we can see a lot of callbacks to the Old Testament. When he mentions Moses and the prophets and, and the Israelites, it's all connected. And so the homily is a time for us to gather and listen to Father as he shares a few thoughts. We've been through a lot of school, so it's just being able to put all the pieces together to see not only how it fits together as the story, but also how it fits together in our life. And I'll be the first to admit, sometimes the homily is really engaging and sometimes it's not. And that's okay, because just like I said with the readings, if there's hard words or if it's hard to focus, to just listen closely. Because in the homily, Jesus might have something to say to you, to see that this is us listening to the word of God together. It's powerful. It's a powerful thing for us to remember. 
He's so generous to us. He allows us to be a part of this, to hear these stories and, and to re be reminded of how much God has loved us since the beginning of time and, and how much lo uh, God loved us on the cross and, and how much God loves us right now. To see that we get to be a part of this living, breathing story. It's not just another book, right? This book that we read from the lectionary, it's just a fancy Bible. But the cool thing is, you don't have to wait till you come to Mass to jump into God's Word. He gave it to us in such a way that each of us can jump into it anytime we want. Let me guess, if you look around your house, I'm gonna guess you can find yourself your very own Bible. Now, this one right here, this is the one that I normally pray with. It's a little smaller than that big red one I showed you, but it has all of the different readings that we might read at Mass. So you can jump into the Old Testament, read about Moses and Abraham and Adam and Eve and David. Maybe you could turn to some letters by Paul and Peter. Learn a little bit about the people who follow Jesus in the Acts of the Apostles. And maybe I might recommend most jumping into the Gospels. Somebody asked me once if there's going to be a continuation of Acts of the Apostles. Is the Bible ever going to have books added? Are we ever going to continue the story? And officially, no, right? All of the books of the Bible that we find in here, they were written by the time that the last apostles had died. So nothing was made up after Jesus. And yet, in some way, I think the story is continuing. The story continues each and every time that we make a choice for the sake of Jesus. We are the continuation of the story. There can be a huge focus on the second half of the Mass, and <laughs> I get it. The Liturgy of the Eucharist is very important, and we're going to talk about it, because that's where we receive Jesus. But when we read the Word of God, we also receive Jesus. And so we should be fed often on his word. And I think one of the coolest things is each of us can have our own favorite stories. What might speak to you won't speak to another. Now, I'll share with you, I love reading the letters of St. Paul, especially to the Philippians, specifically Philippians 4.4. 4. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. And that's spoken to me because I think I know that he wants us to have a happy and full and holy life. And we do it with Jesus. But again, each of us has our own kind of favorites. So I called one of my buddies and he's gonna share his favorite too. My favorite book of the Bible. Well, then let's do a little drum roll. My favorite book of the Bible, the book of Job. I like Job, but uh, I think everyone can identify with it because, you know, um, we all go through a lot of suffering. And even though we're, we're being good people, we wonder, you know, maybe we ask God, you know, why am I going through this, you know? And um, he has that great conversation with God, too, you know, uh, where he kind of questions things. And God says, well, where were you when I made the heavens and the earth? And he said, okay, and he goes on and on from there, God does. And he says, okay, I get the point. He says, I won't ask any more questions, you know. And uh, I think that's helpful, too, because, you know, we don't see the bigger picture, but God does. God does. And so, um, and then as it turns out, you know, that was his suffering was just all part of a plan, though, uh, to draw him closer, the family closer, and to show his faithfulness to God. And then he was rewarded exponentially, you know, after that conversation so uh so you know and it's uh uh so it's it, there's a lot of things i think to commend that uh, that, that i would commend uh, to others to to, to to read so uh so yeah there's a lot of great books it's a um uh there's so many obviously in the new testament but if i had to boil it down man the good old book of job is is my favorite thanks father kime that's awesome see we each can have our own favorites but the only way you can figure out your favorite book of the bible is to get reading. So where does that leave us? I think it leaves us back in that point of preparation to realize that the Lord wants to bring us a lot in the Mass. And so to take the time to read ahead, to, to see what the Lord offers in the different readings, in the old and the new, and in the stories of Jesus walking on earth. So if I leave us with one little phrase, just give it a shot.
if you've never really read the Bible before, maybe you feel kind of scared to start because you're afraid you don't know enough. Well, the only way that we can start running with the Lord, with his word, is to pick it up. Flip it open. Even if you play Bible roulette, just start with one verse and then keep going. And if you come across anything cool, don't be afraid to share it with your whole family. I mean, share with us. Send us an email. Uh, I could definitely use the help of my homilies. So enjoy the word. Enjoy Jesus coming to us in the scriptures. He just wants to love us. And this is a beautiful way that we can sit and be with the one who made us. I hope you have a phenomenal week. And I can't wait to be back together in person, especially in the newly renovated church. I mean, who doesn't love these blue chairs? I love them. But they're nothing like the pews. We'll see you soon. Well, thanks, Father Blood. You are so wonderful in how you teach and excite us about God's world and Mass. That chunk of Mass, called the Liturgy of the Word, is my second favorite part. Do you wonder what my most favorite part is? No, it's not when it's over. You'll have to stay tuned to the explanations of the Mass at each of our F3 sessions. I'll let you know when we get to my favorite part. I really love listening to what the Bible says. Sometimes I try to put myself into the story and imagine how I would react. Listening to the Word of God can only make those words sink into our being and change us to be more like Christ. So let's make a point to really listen to the liturgy, liturgy of the word at mass next weekend. Okay, remember at the beginning, I said I had a special guest. He's coming up in a minute. But first, does anyone know what special day we celebrate at the beginning of November? November 1st is All Saints Day, a day where we celebrate all the saints in heaven. It's a glorious day. Then, the very next day, we celebrate All Souls Day, where we show respect by honoring the dead. We pray for those souls and pray they are in heaven or working their way there. Two beautiful days back to back honoring all who have died. There is a beautiful prayer that is chanted, well, sort of sing-songy with the words, and it's called the Litany of the Saints. Maybe you've heard of it before, but maybe not. But I have invited seminarian Bailey Peterson to chant it for us. Please get comfy, close your eyes, relax, and listen to him give glory to our saints in heaven. Or you may want to add your own voice with the response he sings. We sing, pray for us. Hi, Bailey. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. God our Father in heaven, have mercy on us. God the Son, our Redeemer, have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Holy Mary, pray for us. Mother of God, pray for us. Most honored of all virgins, pray for us. Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael, Pray for us, angels of God, pray for us, Abraham, Moses, and Elijah, pray for us, St. John the Baptist, pray for us, 
Saint Joseph, pray for us. Holy patriarchs and prophets, pray for us. Saint Peter and Saint Paul, pray for us. Saint Andrew, pray for us. Saint John and Saint James, pray for us. Saint Thomas, pray for us. Saint Matthew, pray for us. All holy apostles, pray for us. Saint Luke, pray for us. Saint Mark, pray for us. Saint Barnabas, pray for us. Saint Mary Magdalene, pray for us. All disciples of the Lord, pray for us. Saint Stephen, pray for us. Saint Ignatius of Antioch, pray for us. Saint Polycarp, pray for us. Saint Justin, pray for us. Saint Florence, pray for us. Saint Cyprian, pray for us. Saint Boniface, pray for us. Saint Thomas Beckett, pray for us. Saint John Fisher and Thomas More, pray for us. Saint Paul Miki, pray for us. Saint Isaac Shog and Saint John de Brebeuf, pray for us. Saint Peter Chanel, pray for us. Saint Charles Lawanga, pray for us. Saint Perpetua and Saint Felicity, pray for us. Saint Agnes, pray for us. Saint Maria Goretti, pray for us. Holy, holy martyrs for Christ, pray for us. Saint Leo and Saint Gregory, pray for us. Saint Ambrose, pray for us. Saint Jerome, pray for us. Saint Augustine, pray for us. Saint Athanasius, pray for us. Saint Basil and Saint Gregory, pray for us. Saint John Chrysostom, pray for us. Saint Martin of Tours, pray for us. Saint Patrick, pray for us. Saint Cyril and Saint Methodius, pray for us. Saint Charles Barmeo, pray for us. Saint Francis de Sales, pray for us. Saint Pius, pray for us. Saint Anthony, pray for us. Saint Benedict, pray for us. Saint Bernard, pray for us. Saint Francis and Saint Dominic, pray for us. Saint Thomas Aquinas, pray for us. Saint Ignatius of Loyola, pray for us. Saint Francis Xavier, pray for us. Saint Vincent de Paul, pray for us. Saint John Vianney, pray for us. Saint John Bosco, pray for us. Saint Catherine of Siena, pray for us. Saint Teresa of Avila, pray for us. Saint Rose of Lima, pray for us. Saint Lucy, pray for us. Saint Monica, pray for us. Saint Elizabeth, pray for us. All holy men and women, pray for us. Lord, be merciful. 
Lord, save your people from all evil. Lord, save your people from every sin. Lord, save your people from the snares of the devil. Lord, save your people from anger and hatred. Lord, save your people from every evil intention. Lord, save your people from everlasting death. Lord, save your people by your coming as man. Lord, save your people by your birth. Lord, save your people by your baptism. Lord, save your people by your suffering. Lord, save your people by your death and burial. Lord, save your people by your rising to new life. Lord, save your people by your turn in glory to the Father. Lord, save your people by your gift of the Holy Spirit. Lord, save your people by your coming again in glory. Lord, save your people. Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on us. You came into this world, have mercy on us. You suffered for us on the cross, have mercy on us. You died to save us, have mercy on us. You lay in the tomb, have mercy on us. You rose from the dead, have mercy on us. You returned in glory to the Father, have mercy on us. You sent the Holy Spirit upon your apostles, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. You will come again to judge the living and the dead. Have mercy on us. Lord, be merciful to us. Lord, hear our prayer. Give us repentance. Lord, hear our prayer. Strengthen us in your service. Lord, hear our prayer. Reward with eternal life all who do good to us. Lord, hear our prayer. Bless the fruits of the earth and of man's labor. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, show us your kindness. Lord, hear our prayer. Raise our thoughts and desires to you. Lord, hear our prayer. Save us from final damnation. Lord, hear our prayer. Save our friends and all who have helped us. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant eternal rest to all who have died in the faith. Lord, hear our prayer. Spare us from disease, hunger, and war. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring all peoples together in trust and peace. Lord, hear our prayer. Guide and protect your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep the Pope and all the clergy in faithful service to your church. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring all Christians together in unity. Lord, hear our prayer. Lead all men to the light of the gospel. Lord, hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Thank you so much, Bailey. I feel so warm, relaxed, and peaceful after that prayer. I love asking each saint for his prayers. Imagine the saints in heaven hearing those prayers and answering them. Praise God for all our holy saints. You know what, kids? Someday you might become a saint. Who knows? That should be our goal. You guys keep at it. 
Okay, I want to close with our family prayer card. And remember to pray this together once we are done. Remember the joy card? This one is for our nation, and it's for joy. Jesus, he is faithful and true. That's from Revelations chapter 19, verse 11. Pray for others. And this says, pray for our president. What a perfect time to do that. Yourself. Pray for yourself. Lord, help me to live a life of honesty and integrity. And that comes from Psalms chapter 25, verse 20, and chapter 41, verses 11 and 13. So this was a joy card praying for our nation, which we know we need prayers for our nation right now. You guys can think about that when we're done. Then, now I have a little sibling challenge. Wonder what's in store for you, brothers and sisters, or moms and dads, if you're an only child. Oh, play a game together. Hmm, wonder what game you're gonna play. Sorry, trouble. What else is there? Lots of games to play. The prayer reads, Lord, thank you for the gift of play. But if anyone has the world, world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God love and abide him? And you can look that up in 1 John chapter 3, verse 17. It's all about sharing. Good job. Work on that this month. Okay, we have a great start going to our F3 program. And next month, we will come together in person for Mass. Catechesis during the homily, and at the end, family activity and our prayer time. So we're going to see you guys in person on December 5th at 545 for Mass in our newly uh, renovated church. We will not be having dinner, so no bringing a picnic dinner, and we will not do the social gathering afterwards because of COVID. I'm sure you knew that. Please bring your November family envelope and each child's separate folder with their completed gospel weeklies so we can give you guys points so you can get your tokens. Okay, and any other work that you have finished that you didn't turn in, bring it and turn it in. <gasps> you know what? I almost forgot the secret word. The secret word is die. The secret word is die. Okay, well that's everything. Let's close with our glory be. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. See you guys in December. Hi, Holy Family, F3 family. My name is Emily Schubert, and I'm the Enrollment Director at Boiling Catholic High School. I'm excited to be talking to you today. Um, I first wanted to extend a welcome to all of you to say that we would love to have um, you join our Boiling family. Um, we're welcoming all students, and we're especially talking to the eighth graders today to say that we would love to have you come join us um, to be freshmen at Boylan this fall. We have 
Currently, our freshman class, the class of 2024, has students from over 20 different middle schools. So don't feel like you have to attend one of the Catholic schools to attend. Um, we would love to have you join us because we have students that come from all over. I think one of the coolest things about uh, becoming part of the Boylan family is that we get to meet students where they are. So no matter what your educational background is, um, we welcome you and can find classes that are a good fit for you that hopefully meet your interests. Um, we're obviously rooted in our Catholic faith. You all are at religious education, so that's important to you. Um, and you would get to take theology every day and be a part of a Catholic community of learners that provide service opportunities, um, lessons in theology, and get to live out your Catholic faith at school, which everybody thinks is pretty cool. Obviously, you know about Boylan Athletics, which is really fun. Lots of school spirit. We're excited when we're able to get to cheer on our fellow students again. Um, but some things that I wanted to mention that we have coming up, if you're interested and checking us out. We have future Titan tours that are available on Tuesdays and Wednesdays from now until Thanksgiving. And we want to welcome eighth graders in to give them an opportunity to see the school. So those are between four and six on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Um, there is contact information on our website so you can give us a call to register. We do ask for pre-registration a day in advance so we know how many families to plan for. Um, but we are able to provide a tour of the school after hours so that you could at least get a feel for what the building would be like and get to meet some of our current students. Um, for those eighth graders, our placement test is on Saturday, December 5th at 8 o'clock in the morning. All of our incoming freshmen take the test. As I said, we have students that are coming from all over the place, so we want to make sure that we're placing students appropriately. Um, it's not meant to be scary, it's just to place you in the right classes. So if you have any questions, reach out to me. We'd love to have you join us. You should know that we offer financial assistance for families that need it, and almost half of our students receive assistance to attend Boylan. So if that's something that you and your family are talking about, we want you to talk about it with us too. Uh, we'd like to welcome you and have you be part of the Boylan family and I look forward to working with you. Bye!